wetu kwa vitengo vyao kwa Yesu Kristo Bwana wetu tuomba na kuamini. Amen. Basi naomba tuketi Baba Askofu wa diocese yetu ya Mbere, Askofu Daktari Moses Masamba host wetu na Mama Lucy Your Excellency the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya uh, Mheshimiwa Rigathi Gashagwa Your Excellency the Governor of Embu County uh, Madam Cecilia Mbarire wabunge walio hapa nasi senator wa county hii wabunge wa serikali ya county hii MCS walio hapa viongozi wengine waalikwa ndugu zangu maaskofu wa madhehebu zingine ambao wamekuja kujumuika nasi na wakristo wote ambao wamekuja na wasalimu wote tena katika jina la Bwana hamjambo Bwana Yesu asifiwe asifiwe Yesu mokosi mnafuraha Muna amani na matumaini je tunayo si ndio basi twasema asanti kwa nafasi hii ambayo tumealikwa kuja kujumuika nanyi katika sherehe hii ambayo tumesherekea huduma kwa njia na namna nyingi kuna wale ambayo walitumwa kwa makanisa yao kama viongozi waliochaguliwa kuna vitengo ya idara ya umisheni ya Mothers Union vijana wetu wa Narika watoto wetu wa Sunday school wazee wa kama na kwaya mbalimbali ambayo tumewaombea na kuwatuma tuna wachungaji na lay leaders na evangelists lay ministers tuna maaskofu na kila mmoja wetu tunasema asanti tumekuja kusherekea huduma yenu tunasema asanti kwa Bible Society ambayo me kuja kufungua branch hapa ili waweze kueneza huduma ambayo uh, hawa ambayo nahusika na uchapishaji wa Biblia na mafundisho ya neno la Mungu wanatoa kwa wananchi. Your Excellency I sit in the United Bible Society's Global Council as a member representing Africa. Nimetembea kule China na Nanjing kuona vile Biblia inachapishwa kwa lugha zote hata hiyo ambayo umepata leo iliyo na bendera ya Kenya ilichapishwa huko na nikaona ya kila kabila na kila ndimi pasipo neno la Mungu kwa lugha na ndimi zetu hatutaweza kuishukua kwa undani na kuelewa kwa hivyo tunasema asanti kwa uhusiano huo wa karibu wa diocese hii na Bible Society na mlisikia programs kama ya Trauma Healing ya mambo ya literacy na mengi ambayo wanaweza kufanya na kuanzia Jumatatu kutakuwa na mafundisho ya mambo yote ya trauma healing maana society yetu inapitia changamoto. Your Excellency kanisa la Anglikana tuna ministry tunaita wholesome ministry for a wholesome nation. We want to reach to the wholesome person so that we have a relationship with God in our hearts. We have the right state of mind and we support you in the fight against alcohol and other Uh, damaging things that damages our minds including all form of addiction na mwaka huu tumesema ni mwaka wa wholesome family and we know we have a lot of brokenness in our families and we always ask where did the rain start beating us and it started beating us in our families when we began to be so busy for each other those of us who are in the city We know and it's also almost true the in the rural areas the formation of our families has very little interaction for one another. Musea anafika nyumbani kutoka kasini amechoka amechelewa mama amefika amebeba kazi aliyokuwa akifanya nyumbani watoto wamebeba homework na sasa kila mmoja anakuja kungangana na kazi aliyeleta na shida zake ya kazi nafasi ya kuongea na watoto wetu imekwisha katika nyumba zetu ni kweli ama si kweli na tunataka hawa watoto wajuane na sisi tuwe na maadili mema I'm a father of teenagers sasa na teknolojia hii watoto wetu wanakuja kama jana niliwaacha wametoka shuleni kila mtu ako kwa rumi yake hata hawajuani wenyewe kwa sababu kila mtu ako kwa gadget yake anazungumza na mtu usiyejua ni nani anazungumza naye duniani We have a serious problem. 
problem of relationships in our country start from our families. Is it true or false? And dysfunctionality in our families is a result of the many dysfunctionalities in the community we see today. Kwa hivyo badala ya kublemiana huyu na mwingine turudi nyumbani. Tujenge maisha yetu nyumbani. Na hii mwaka tumesema in the Anglican Church this is our year of wholesome family. So Bible society as you uh, train the clergy of uh, Mbere on trauma healing also plan to train all of us on how to lead family and be family because we have lost it at the family level. If we begin to go back to the family setup and uh, inculcate values at the family setup, led by the word of God and prayer, we shall have a different society and a different nation altogether. We have come to celebrate opportunities for mission. And Bishop Moses, thank you for leading us in creating an opportunity for mission, inviting the border border sector who have been seen to be a very disorganized group to organize them for Jesus Christ and for the betterment of their lives. When the church begin to care and provide care services to the community, we shall all go beyond where we currently are. I want us to read from, uh, to share the word of God from Nehemiah. A section read to us, chapter 6. Chapter 6 is a build-up of the whole narration of the mission Nehemiah got from the Lord when he heard that Jerusalem is in rumbles and ruins and people are under ridicule and they lost their dignity and their lives are completely shattered because the walls of Jerusalem are burned down and the destruction that has happened and the Israelites have no formation and form, he cried before the Lord in chapter 1, he asked God for favor to give him opportunity to go and rebuild the lives of others in Jerusalem. The Lord favored him. He granted him his wishes. And when he went before the king, the king asked him, what is troubling you, Nehemiah? I've never seen you sad like this. And he said, I cannot be happy when where I come from is in ruins and in rumbles. I wonder how many of us who are living in comfort zone in Nairobi remember the grassroots where we come from and have a yearningness to go and rectify that which is not right in our backyard. Nehemiah did remember his backyard and said, I want to go back home and rebuild and uh, reconstruct. We normally end the story of Nehemiah as a great leader and mobilizer, and we end it at the completion of the wall of Jerusalem in chapter 6, verse 15, when there was that big celebration, in 52 days, the walls were finished. But my sharing today is beyond the wall. Hello? It is beyond? Tell your neighbor, we are sharing beyond the wall. Because the, beyond the wall were the people of Israel who lost their dignity, who are in ruins, whose life is being ridiculed by everybody, and who have lost space and face in the face of their world that day. So the finishing of the wall gave them opportunities for restoration. And I want to dwell today on the restoration of the people of Israel. When God gave them opportunity for the restoration of worship of Yahweh, and their self-esteem redeemed, and they are given hope which they lost, and they are going to be a free people once again. So after 52 days, the wall is finished. What that represented is that the people who have been challenging them, Tobias and Geshem and uh, the rest of them who are Sanballat, who are opposing the work, they fell themselves in their self-esteem. They knew the work was completed, not because of the ability of the children of Israel but because their God was with them. Amen? Their God was? When God is with you, everything is possible. Tell your neighbor. When God is with you, everything is possible. They finish the wall. Their dignity is restored. They have a place called home. Their identity is reassured again. 
they became a people who know there is a God in heaven who can change hard situations. And they got the opportunity. Their lives were changed. But that was not the end to Nehemiah's mission. If you go through to the pre, you know, following chapters, in chapter 8, Nehemiah summoned Ezra to come and read the law of God before the children of Israel so that they reconnect with their relationship with God by observing and keeping the law of God. So chapter 8 is a reading in public of the law of God and a recommitment of the law of God. If you go to chapter 9, he led them to confess their sins. It is a moment of conversion and reconnection. They became God's own people. Once they were not, but now they have become God's own people. Their lives were reformed. Reformation and restoration happened. In chapter 10, they signed the covenant anew. They agreed with God anew. You are going to remain our God forever, and we are going to be your people forever. We are going to serve you forever. And relationships were established once again. Relationship. And after they signed the covenant, from verse 28 of chapter 10, there is a summary of the covenant. They remembered again what God has told them. But the beauty is crowned in chapter 11. The population of the city increased. Prosperity happened. So when God restores our people, what is guaranteed is good health. What is guaranteed is increase in numbers because there will be good health. What is guaranteed is prosperity. What is guaranteed is joy and harmony because people have reconnected their lives with God. Buana Yesu asifiwe. We are here gathered today because the Diocese of Mary has gathered us to remind us that when we reconnect our lives to God, everything else changes. The atmosphere changes. Amen? Ukiungana tena na mwenyezi mungu hali yako na anga ya maisha yako inayo kuzunguka, yote inabadilika. Buana Yesu asifiwe. Inafanya nini? Inabadilika. Everything changes. And this now takes us to the second reading, which was ably read to us from the book of First Peter, chapter 2, and beginning to read from verse 1. The theme is the same. A reconnection to our God change our identity. Give us hope. Restore our dignity. Give us opportunities to be known not as just people, but God's own people. But this is how it must begin. Verse 1. Read yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into a salvation. Into salvation. If indeed you have tested that the Lord is good. What St. Peter is reminding us is what Nehemiah reminded the children of Israel. We must be reconnected to our God. We must recount, renounce our wayward ways. We must repent our sins. We must say sorry to our God. And we must say sorry to one another and rebuild our lives as a community together. Read yourselves, therefore, of all malice, all guile, insincerity, envy and slander like newborn babies and now these other practices and uh, the things that uh, we do to self-destroy ourselves you know peer pressure uh, addiction to alcohol and other addictive and many things that destroy us and spoil us completely especially our youth get rid of things that are going to harm you get rid of things that are going to destroy you in the same breath as a nation, all of us gathered leaders, national, county, and the religious leaders, we must get rid of hatred. We must embrace each other. We must love and to live and thrive together. We must learn the culture of hard work and our choice to follow Jesus Christ, for he is the one to give us hope. 
Amen. It is only in him that we have a sure hope. It is only in him that we can be able to go beyond the current formation. I know we are still struggling to come out of a hard scenario and season. Out of COVID-19, we had a drought. Out of the, you know, when the drought, we, we ran a very expensive election that also divided us. And then there is a weakening of the Kenya shilling. There is a high cost of living because of prices. And uh, we are still struggling to emerge out of this. We cannot do it if we blame one another. We must work with the Kenyan spirit of resilience, of hard work. And we want to thank God, Your Excellency, I traverse Kenya. One of the beauty that I see is that Kenyans are hardworking. They are cultivating everywhere. There is enough food. Maybe the cost God will help us to address when the rains are sufficient to bring our crops to maturity. This is where we need to go on our knees as Christians in the church, that the Lord will not stop giving us sufficient rains so that we can be able to address a myriad of the problems affecting us today. But we cannot do it until we all have a resolve to work together. And working together has to be drawn by the power of God who drew us to become one family. And St. Peter says, come to him, a living stone, Though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones yourselves, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. We have been invited, all of us, to join together as living stones to the living stone Jesus Christ and be built together into a spiritual house where we all embrace and take care of one another. As a church, our vision as the Anglican Church is a, a, a growing and a caring church, boldly speaking the message of salvation through Jesus Christ. We want to see that growth to be measured by how we care. And today, the ministry of the Boda Boda is a demonstration of the care the church wants to give to society. Not only that, we care for the less fortunate through our programs of Anglican Development Services. And Your Excellency, uh, the Governor and the Deputy President, we complement government efforts. We don't compete. We are serving the same people to complement government efforts. We are in food security. We are in climate change and adaptation. We have strived as a child to plant 15 million trees by the year 2026 when we shall be celebrating our year of wholesome ecology. This year is our year of wholesome family. Because we believe when the environment is conducive and when all of us work together as communities and church and state, the lives of people get better. So sometimes, Your Excellency, when you speak, uh, see us speak, uh, and even uh, saying what the government should do, it is not that we are competing. We are not a government in waiting. We are not an opposition. We want you to be better, and we want this government to be better, and any other government to be better. Because when the government is better, the lives of people are better. And that's what we want to see all of us grow, to become better and better the lives and ministry of each other. But I, I love the ending of this section. The Bible says... But you are now a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God is calling us every day out of darkness. And there are many things that are darkening and dampening our lives. One is what you are fighting with, Your Excellency. Alcohol and other substances, abuses. Laziness dampen our lives. Hatred and uh, tribalism dampen our lives. Corruption and mismanagement of public resources, even church resources, dampen the lives of those who depend on them. We must all strive to get rid of these things and strive to be identified with God. That's what Nehemiah strived to do 
to bring dignity to a people who have lost dignity by reconnecting them with the Spirit of God. This is what St. Peter's is reminding us. When you are reconnected with the Spirit of God, now you have a new identity. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that we may continue to proclaim the mighty acts of God who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we all strive to get into this marvelous light, then the rest will be history. We shall be a better people. We shall be a nation that fear God. We shall be a nation that strive and grow together. We shall be a country that will be respected locally and beyond. And verse 10, once you are not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is where we want to be. This is where we want to be. Church, community, leadership, nation, county, locality. If we all strive to know this God, our identity shifts ground. Once we were not a people, now we become a dignified people. That's what we want to do to the border border sector. They have not been considered as a people, but when they come and they connect their spirit to the spirit of God, they earn their respect. Their self-esteem will rise, and not only the border border, but other sectors of society. Your Excellency, I was sharing last night in Adina, we had my own personal story. I lost my family inheritance in 1971. When uh, my father died in 69, my mother and my three sisters were sent away by my stepbrothers. We lost everything. But Christian, uh, a Christian organization by the name World Vision came to our village in 1975 when I was in class three, looking for children to be sponsored. And I became one of those sponsored children. So out of that, now we have the Archbishop of the Anglican Church. I participated in launching a book of a gentleman by the name Dr. Macmillan Kiru, who was the director of World Vision that time. And he invited me without knowing. I was one of those children, and I did not also know until I read his profile. And he invited me to launch that book as his Archbishop. And this is what I told him in that congregation. Dr. Macmillan, in 1975, our paths crossed each other. You didn't know me, I didn't know you, but I was very present in your table as a number of the many children you are counting as numbers of sponsored children from Narok and other parts of the country. And today, behind every number is a soul. And the soul behind the numbers you are counting in 1975 is now the Archbishop standing before you. He cried. What am I saying? Touching the lives of the invisible, those who have nobody to care, is a great blessing. And there are many in this country who nobody knows them. When the church and the community and the leadership, both at national and county level, put programs that touch their lives, they will not remain as numbers. Because they are not numbers, they are souls. Precious before God. God has favored us as people who once were not a people, but now we are God's own people. People who did not receive mercy, but now we have received mercy. May God enrich our lives and reconnect us to his spirit. For when we are connected to the spirit of God, everything else changes. I end by narrating a very short story of a man who discovered the Americas. His name is Columbus, we all know the story. Columbus one day wanted to explore the West. And he went to the Queen of Spain because uh, Spain and Portugal were leading in the voyages that have conquered the sea and they were leading exploration across uh, the expanse of the seas of the world. So he said to the Queen, I want to go West this time round. And the queen said, I don't want you to lose my fleet. That time, the world was thought to be flat. And they thought there was an end to the world. Like the end of this table, then you fall and fall to, you know, uh, uh, 
to, to space. So when this guy sailed, and he was told to read the map carefully, the next signal he sent is, we are approaching the end of the world. And the queen said, please turn, bring my ships and my men back safely. And the man went on sailing. The next communication he sent was, we are well beyond the map. We have sailed beyond the current known map. We have an opportunity to redraw the map and be the first nation to redraw the map. And uh, he was told to return. And he said, I cannot turn until I see the end. And the end they saw was the expand continent of America. And he discovered because he was willing to go beyond the map. How far are we willing to go in our faith journey, in our development agenda? in our families, in our communities, let us all strive to sail beyond the map. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.